Good afternoon. My name is Juan Maldonado, and today we're going to be covering the Army Distributed Simulation Capability for the Class MEM 6200 uh, Project Management Engineering Project. The advisor is Dr. Hector Cruzal, and this is my project. The agenda I'm going to be covering today is the topic, introduction, objective, training models, DSC overview, saving and analysis, DSC testing, and the conclusion. Moving forward to the topic, the Army Distributed, distributed Simulation Capability removes the tyranny of the geographic of training. What this, in, in simple words, what it does is, is it's just like a PlayStation network. Uh, you can play in one location. I mean, you can simulate and train in one location, and another unit will be in another location, and they can actually interact uh, through the simulation system and, com and do training in different locations. Um, if we look and compare it to the PlayStation network, it's just like when they play Call of Duty, you have one house, multiple houses connecting to one uh, server, which is the PlayStation server. This is the same we're trying to do with the um, Army distributed simulation system. So they can conduct training from different locations connecting to one point. A little bit of our history of my organization where I work at is the 75th Training Command. What we do here is our main mission is to train units that are going to the war. So we go all across the United States training these units so they can actually do, perform their duties at war. So we have strategically placed five uh, organizations around the United States to cover these missions. Uh, with budget cut downs and budget um, costs going on uh, with, with government looking at it, we have to shift, uh, we have to overlook our methods of training and DSC is, is what we're looking forward to implement or we were looking to implement. The objective of the DSC is to reduce costs and indirect costs. Like I mentioned before, the government is looking to cut all this budget, ex excessive budget expenditures. Provide simulated training without compromising its quality. We don't want training, I mean, we're switching from live training, which has been the method for many years, now to simulate to a simulated web training. And, and we don't want to change that ability of trainers to, uh, to, of trainees to get trained. Reduce the movement of troops and safety incidents. Many troops, in, uh, while in live training, they get they get um, accidents, they get into accidents, and we want to minimize that safety issues. This is our training process right now. The live process, the live process looks like we have two uh, events, which is the Mission Command Seminar, also known as the MCS, and the CXDX, which is the Command Seminar Training Exercise. The first one is three-day event, and the second one is a 21-day event. Uh, due to the uh, magnitude of the events and uh, how much it costs, uh, is we only can perform two events. While in DSC training process is cheaper, and, and since we don't have too much movement, uh, we don't move, move uh, troops from one location to another, we're able to perform two extra trainings. So we'll have a total of four. We will have the Mission Command Seminar, two Staff X, and the CXDX itself. Uh, it gives us an advantage because we're training with, with this way less money amount of money, we are training more our, our soldiers to go to war. That's, that's one of the biggest advantages of DSC. This is the overview of the system. We're going to have a main hub right here in, uh, in Texas, which is the Mission Training Command Complex, which is also known as the MTC. It connects to the DOD network, which is the D uh, Department of Defense network. It's just like a uh, cloud. Uh, everything, all the information goes to that cloud and gets distributed to the five locations we have across the United States. How does this information get to uh, complete uh, the training or it gets to, uh, to, to the simulation part with the PUBCAN? The PUBCAN is, on not, uh, is also known as the point of access uh, control, point of access, point of presence capability, access node, I'm sorry. Uh, and this is what it, it changed that data to the simulation. And we'll have one on each of uh, the, the divisions. And this gives us a versatility to train either Army Reserve, National Guard, Air Force, Navy. This is the essence of this DSC training. I mean, this DSC training. The milestones. We set the, uh, the, the timeline for DSC for five years. It started on the year 12, and it started with the design and acquiring all the equipment. We sat down, a team sat down, we went and looked for the best um, equipment out there to perform this simulation training. And then after that, well, we had we had all the equipment. So what we're gonna do now? We're gonna distribute it to the five divisions, but we don't want any uh, other divisions uh, or organizations doing their own kind of training and their own procedures. So we sat down. We set some rules and some guidelines. We noted down. We created a what we call an SOP, a DEX SOP, standard operation procedure. So we will standardize 
and, and centralize all the training. Year 13, moving to the year 13, it was three events. We had the proof of principle, which it was to prove that our system and design, it, it was accurate and, and it was uh, going to perform the, perform the training where we were looking at. The field in it was go out to the field and, and test our equipment. We went to uh, and did uh, with another, in our location in the MTC, we performed the training to complete and, and, and make sure it was working. Then we went to the initial operation capability, which was going and reaching those divisions and push the training from the MTC to the network and from the network to that location. Then we move forward to the uh, four, year 14, which is right now, and we already completed the fully operation capable um, a block, which is nothing else than have the MTC pushing all the information around the five location out of, uh, out of one given training. So in one mission, we're training five different organizations. Then we have the global simulation joint Princip proof of principle which is going to reach the globe so we have missions all around the world so we're trying to get those missions to be simulated too but first we got to work on the uh, state side before we go and conquer the globe and then for fiscal year 15 is when we're looking forward to be actually training units uh, around the globe this is the cost benefit analysis we train around 60 to 75 missions a year and it costs us 2.1 million dollars a year to train this 65 to 70 missions. With DSC, uh, the, the original cost of DSC is $2.9 million. So the difference between the 2.9 and the 2.1 of the live training, it will give us a, a, a cost and cure of $875,000. But moving forward to year two, three, four, and five, what we will see is that DSC only gonna require $150,000 for the maintenance against, uh, versus the $2.1 million that every year we gotta spend on live training. So looking forward in the five years time frame I talked to you, we were going to implement this system. Uh, it's going to give us a six uh, a return or a return on investment or a saving of seven million dollars in five years. This is the saving summary. While I just went over, it's five years and the breakdown is fiscal year fourteen is where we're going to buy the system. It's, it's going to cost us two point nine and already taking account of the two point one we were given. To conduct life training and then we want to have to require another eight hundred and sixty five thousand dollars to get the DSC implemented with the training and everything uh, to 2015 it will we will save 1.9 and 16 1.9 also and in 17 another 1.9 it will give us a total of 6.9 million dollars of saving this is the graph like I mentioned this is the cost of the equipment and then how is gonna the uh, it's gonna keep increasing the savings up to uh, year five, which is six point nine million dollars. DSC testing testing it took place in two two um, events. The first event was the proof of concept. It was conducted on August two thousand thirteen at Mississippi. The concept of this training was to have three units with one pop can at one location conduct training. We, it was successful. It was a hundred percent go. No issues, no failures on this testing. It was pretty. It's pretty. It was pretty good. The second event was the pup can testing. It took place on 400 League of California. The concept of this training was to have three units spread out in California. They were in three different locations in California, and each one had a pup can. Why each one had a pup can? Because every unit was a different type of unit. One was a logistician, the other one was infantry, and the other one was on um, transportation. So all their training was going to be different, but it was going to be synced only in one mission. So the transportation unit was giving support to the infantry and so and so forth. In this training, we had an a, a issue and it was trying to access the network, the cloud. We have a little, uh, uh, we had like an hour delay. We were looking forward to three hours of training and we have an hour delay. But since we trained, uh, we, have, we have subject matter expert that we train when DSC got implemented. And this, we, we call them, it's like a call desk. And they came in, they fixed it, and we were up and live doing the training uh, and simulating the training. Uh, the other remaining two hours were a success. They were a go and training was certified. In conclusion, the distributed simulation capability system is very uh, is, is accurate, it saves dollars, it's been, it's been confirmed on the two trainings that we performed, the two testing, we, uh, we saved the government $500,000 on those two events. Uh, like I mentioned, the cost analysis was done, it's $6.9 million we can do in five, we can save in five years. Uh, it removes that tyranny of geography. Uh, trainer, I mean, trainees can, can get trained in different locations 
without movement. So it doesn't require no movement. With no movement required, safety uh, it decreases a lot. We don't we, we didn't have no issues on those two events that we conducted. No injuries. In the in, in the past, we have by while moving personnel from from point A to point B, there was, there's always an injury. Uh, also, indirect cost and direct cost was reduced because we don't use gas on, on the indirect side. Um, people on the planning side, they, they don't they don't fly anywhere to get the planning. Uh, we don't we don't have to look for different scenarios of war, so that doesn't that doesn't require no 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 dollars expenses. <coughs> Sorry, and in the direct cost, which will be the lodging and the travel of the soldiers, they don't require a lodging. They run they're, they're at the home station. They're where where they live at. So I mean, it's a great tool. And also the NATO now is looking forward to implement this. NATO is around the globe. That's the the glo uh, the, the national force. And, and for them to train everybody is very difficult and very expensive. They're looking also to simulate a training. And DSC is the future of, of training. And while the, the budget keeps going down and, and cutting down and, and expenses are, are way high, this is it. This is the, the, this is, this is the tool that we need. And, and, and it's been proven. We proved it. And we're looking forward to keep implementing it. That's all I have. If any questions, please let me know. Address them all. And I'll be glad to answer them.